To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Hi friends, let's now move into a new unit, a new concept altogether which is called management of working capital or working capital management. Now, if you remember in the syllabus of financial management, we have seen various decisions till now. That is, uh, if you understand the balance sheet in a horizontal way, we said we have equity uh, and long term liabilities. Below that we have current liabilities. Then on the asset side, we have fixed assets and current assets. We said the study of this equity and long term liabilities is called financing decisions, wherein we understood the concept of capital structure decisions and uh, cost of capital combined with leverages. Yes. Moving on to the asset side, the study of investments, the study of fixed assets, we said it is called as capital budgeting decisions. We also saw the risk analysis and capital budgeting decisions. Yes. Now we will move to the next segment that is the combined segment of current assets and current liabilities which is called as working capital management. The study of all these things put together, we know it is called ratio analysis, even that part we have completed. Now let us focus mainly on the study of current assets and current liabilities which is called as working capital management. Well, in this huge unit of working capital management, we have uh, some chapters, some main chapters which you are supposed to learn. The first chapter talks about the meaning and concept of working capital wherein we will understand as to what is working capital and how to compute the working capital. What is the estimated working capital? Then we will move on to the next segment. That is, in detail, we will study each uh, working capital uh, items, that is the current assets and current liabilities items. We will start with cash or treasury management, then we will move to stock or inventory management, then we will move to receivables or debtors management, and lastly, we will go to payables or creditors management. And at the end, we will see what is the concept of working capital financing or financing of working capital. How is working capital being financed is what we will see in the last chapter of this unit. So broadly, these are the areas where we are, where we will be focusing for a while from hereafter. Now, what is working capital management? Now, as we said, we already have the habit of understanding a concept by virtue of or with respect to the name of the title or the title of the concept that is working capital management means in simple words, management of working capital. Now, first of all, what is working capital? You should first know what is working capital, then to talk about what is management of working capital. Absolutely, yes. That is what we will be seeing in the first chapter. So, let us zoom in to the first chapter that is the importance and concept of working capital. We will understand the concepts of working capital, various concepts and finally, we will move into the uh, computation of estimated working capital. So, what is the meaning of working capital? Again, breaking these two words and trying to understand. Working capital means the capital required for working of the business or capital required for doing the business. Now, what is this capital? Now, basically, how do we utilize capital? We've said majorly we make investments in fixed assets. But friends, tell me, will only fixed assets be able to generate revenue for you? Definitely no. There has to be something else for which you are supposed to run the business. Now, these investments where you make for the purpose of running the business, is called working capital. Put it in simple words, let us take a human body. If you say all these body parts are considered as fixed assets, the blood which runs throughout the body can be called as working capital. If you take an engine of a car, all the parts of the engine can be considered as fixed assets, whereas the fuel which, which runs throughout the engine and makes the car move can be called as working capital. Now coming into the financial terminology, let us say we are uh, into some uh, manufacturing business. So oh, friends, the primary objective of any business, be it manufacturing concern, be it trading concern, be it service, whatever, is wealth maximization. Now, so how does this, this wealth maximization happen only when it can generate sufficient profits effectively? No. How can a company generate profits only when it has got sufficient sales? Now, do you think the moment a, the company starts a business, it can generate sales of the products what it wants to make? Definitely no. The company has to buy the raw material. We said it's a manufacturing concern. Therefore, it has to make the product what it wants to make. It will take some time. The moment raw material comes, it does not go to factory immediately. There is some period for which it has to be retained there. There is some average stock which has to be maintained by the company, be it in the form of raw material or work in progress or finished goods, whatever. Now then, this goes to the factory for being made. 
Now, there is a process, there is a long process which involves material labor as well as overheads to compute the cost. Then it becomes a finished good say and even this finished good also will not be sent for sale immediately. There is still some more time. Now, once it is sent for sale, do you think immediately you will generate cash? No, they may be sold for credit. That, that is, you will generate some, the company will generate some debtors. Now, after a period of time, these debtors will turn into cash. Therefore, these said sales are majorly important, but these sales, are they generated on day one? No. There is a huge time lag between getting the raw material or purchasing the raw material and generating or realizing the cash in the name of sales. So, for all this time, do you think the company will stop business? Absolutely no. To get or to run business, all this process is required. Now, therefore, what is the capital required for working? That is from the beginning stage till the time cash is realized is the working capital. Generally, in the same uh, the horizontal format of balance sheet what we have seen, majorly we will say the long term funds that is the equity and long term liabilities they are majorly utilized for fixed assets. And the current liabilities, they are funded for current assets. But friends, please keep in mind, a part of long term funds should also be meant or kept aside for current assets. Therefore, we will say not the entire long term funds will be will go away for in the name of fixed assets, but a part of them should also go for working of the business in the name of current assets. So, let us understand first of all what are current assets and what are current liabilities and then move on to understanding the concept of working capital. So, we have been talking about working capital, working capital, but mathematically what is working capital is it is current assets minus current liabilities. So, first as we said we will understand what are current assets and what are current liabilities. According to the definition of current assets, the assets will be considered as current assets only when they are realized or intend to, to be sold or consumed during the operating cycle, normal operating cycle of the entity. Point number one, that is they are expected to be realized or intended to be sold or consumed during the normal operating cycle of the entity. Then the second point is they are expected to be realized within 12 months from the reporting period. Thirdly, they are expected to be utilized for the purpose of trading. Remember, for the purpose of trading only. Now, I have a big building. I have a, I have purchased a building for the company. Do you think my business is to uh, purchase building and sell buildings? It is a fixed assets. I am not buying and selling buildings. I am talking about a manufacturing concern. Say, for example, I want to manufacture an AC. Now, in manufacturing AC, I may, I may buy a building, I may buy a factory. But I will not buy and sell buildings and buy and sell factories. They are my fixed assets. But what are all the components of AC? which will uh, become the complete product of an AC, they are meant for trading. They will be bought, they will be sold. Therefore, those assets which are meant for the purpose of trading only will be considered as current assets and there, has to, there should not be any restriction or, on this cash or cash equivalent. Coming to the current liabilities, you can see a parallel definition between current assets and current liabilities. That is, we said in the case of current assets, they are expected to be realized within the normal operating cycle. In the same way, current liabilities are expected to be settled. They are current liabilities. They have to be settled. They, they are expected to be settled within the normal operating cycle. They are expected to be settled also within 12 months from the reporting period. And lastly, they are also taken. They are also being made a liability only for the purpose of trading. That is, if you say you want to make an equity, you have raised an equity, you are not raising equity for the purpose of trading. The equity is utilized for the purpose of long term fund in the name of a long term fund to purchase some long term assets. But whereas current liability it is it is raised only for the purpose of trading. Therefore, these three points the first three points here and the three points here they are in line with each other. Therefore, these are the definitions to be categorized as current assets and current liabilities. Now that we have seen the definition of current assets and current liabilities let us see what are the items which are categorized as current assets and current liabilities. Firstly, talking about current assets, uh, the first item we can say is inventory. Inventory can be in the form of raw material, work in progress, as well as finished goods, finished stock. Therefore, all these three will be categorized as inventory under the head of current assets. Then, receivables, that is bills receivables or debtors, trade receivables. Then, we, we can also have cash and cash equivalents. What are cash equivalents? Cash equivalents are those items which are equivalent to cash but not cash. You have bank, you have a cash in bank, 
you might have cash also in marketable securities. So why are we calling it as cash equivalents? Even if you have cash in your hand or cash at bank, it is as good as having cash in your hand. You can immediately withdraw the amount. Today you have ATM facility wherein instantly you can get the money, not even by going to the bank also, even on a bank holiday, you can get the money from ATM. Also, in the name of short term uh, securities, whose maturity is less than uh, two days or three days, even they are considered as cash equivalent. That is within three, two to three days, you can sell off your securities and get cash. Therefore, cash and cash equivalents are categorized under one head. And lastly, prepaid expenses. Therefore, these are the major current assets which we will be talking in this chapter. Moving on to current liabilities. Payables, that is trade payables and bills payables. And then outstanding payments, that is in the form of uh, wages or salaries. These two will be seen majorly as current liabilities. Friends, the concept of working capital can be understood in two angles. The first angle is on the basis of value and the second is on the basis of time. Let's go one by one. On the basis of value, working capital is defined as gross working capital or net working capital. Now, what is gross working capital? Gross working capital signifies the investment of working capital in current assets. That is, whatever is the investment made in current assets itself is called gross working capital. Friends, ideally speaking, working capital refers only to the current assets, but current liabilities will support in deduction of working capital to some extent. Hence, we will consider current liabilities also and then reduce the requirement of working capital, which is now called as net working capital. Therefore, on the basis of value, if it is complete investment in current assets, it is called gross working capital. If it is current assets minus current liabilities, such a reduction, redu reduced value of working capital is called net working capital. So, this is about working capital on the basis of value. Coming to the basis of time, working capital on the basis of time can be categorized as permanent working capital and temporary working capital. Now, what is permanent working capital? As the name suggests, or as the name says, permanent working capital is that working capital which is required permanently by the company throughout the life of the company as long as it operates. So, can we in simple words say it is the minimum working capital required by the company? Absolutely, yes. So, irrespective of the conditions happening outside, be it in the market, be it uh, due to demand and supply, uh, be it due to the increase in or decrease in productivity of the production levels of the company, whatever be the reasons. What is generally the minimum working capital required by the company based on its nature of industry, based on its policies, based on its practices, such minimum level of working capital required by the company throughout is called as permanent working capital. Now over and above this working capital, if at all additionally there is a need of some more working capital, such working capital is called temporary working capital. We can say it is something like a situational requirement based on time friends. At any point of time you require same amount that is called permanent working capital. But situationally based on time or based on the demand and supply based on various any other factors if there is a requirement of additional working capital over and above the permanent working capital such working capital is called as temporary working capital. Now if you observe in a graphical format for a stable company permanent working capital will be a straight line a flat horizontal line. Now, whatever are the lines, curved lines seen over and above the straight line indicate the temporary working capital. Now, in the case of a growing company, even for a growing company also, the permanent working capital will be straight line only. Only point is, as the company is growing, there will be an increase in the permanent working capital. Therefore, you will see an inclined straight line instead of a horizontal straight line. Now, over and above this permanent working capital, inclined straight line also, whatever is the working capital required based on the requirement, based on the situation, such excess of working capital over and above the permanent working capital is called as temporary working capital. Friends, let us now talk about the significance of working capital or the importance of having adequate working capital. We already mentioned earlier that a company generally invests most of the uh, long-term funds in the long-term assets and keeps aside a component of this for the purpose of utilizing for working capital. Now, how much has to be uh, kept aside and how much has to be invested depends upon uh, the nature of the company or the nature of the business, then the production policies, the policies adopted by the company, the demand supply and the market conditions, so many other factors. But end of the day, the company has to know how much it has to keep aside or invest in working capital. The first question comes, when we say we are supposed to keep adequate, immediately what do we say? 
what happens if we don't keep adequate working capital so only when you know the uh, effects or results of not doing something right you will be careful in doing what is right now coming to the point what happens if we do not maintain adequate working capital now not maintaining adequate working capital means there can be two scenarios one having too much of investment made in working capital or two having too less investment made in working capital let us talk about the first case if we invest too much in working capital it is a, a scenario which is similar to over capitalization which leads to unnecessary idle funds so friends what is the meaning of idle funds the funds are kept idle in the name of working capital you have brought them and dumped here and they are being blocked they are not utilized effectively not just theoretically friends practically also if you see any fund involves some cost therefore this idle funds will also involve idle cost by by blocking too much of huge idle funds you will end up in paying huge costs for unnecessarily for the purpose of simply blocking these funds here therefore because of this even the even though the liquidity will be seen to be more the profitability will fall down on the other side of the coin what if we maintain too less working capital you may say ah no profitability will be more we are avoiding uh, idle cost but friends by not having sufficient working capital it leads to lack of liquidity that is it may uh, bring up or trigger a situation called insolvency not having sufficient current assets to address the current liabilities will not only lead to illiquidity will also lead to a threat to the company the current liability uh, providers that is the liability the loan providers for the short term purpose they will have a threat whether these liabilities will be addressed or not therefore there has to be an adequate working capital what is working capital we said current assets minus current liabilities therefore current assets should always be more than current liabilities to address comfortably and sufficiently but at the same time it should not be too high also to result in unnecessary cost therefore in simple words uh, can't we say the entire theme or game of this chapter is to understand the interrelationship between current assets and current liabilities absolutely yes therefore the main agenda of this chapter is to know as to how much has to be invested in working capital therefore friends maintenance of adequate working capital is not just a short term need it also plays a vital role in the long run of the business therefore whenever a company wants to make an investment decision it should not only think about the building the plant and machinery that is all the fixed assets it should also consider the requirement of additional current assets for the purpose of running of the business that is say for example the company's productions have increased the production levels have increased obviously what happens the inventory levels will increase that is the current assets will increase similarly if the sales have increased compared to the past definitely there will be an increase in credit sales there that is debtors will increase therefore in the same lines whenever there is an increase in the operation of the company in a larger scale definitely there will be an increase in the requirement of working capital also hence the question comes as to what is the optimum working capital what should be the ideal or optimum working capital to say it is an adequate working capital and if you remember if we go back to the chapter called ratio analysis there we have mentioned that in general especially for manufacturing concerns the adequate or a reasonable ratio of current assets and current liabilities is 2 is to 1 therefore generally for manufacturing concerns we can say 2 is to 1 is considered as optimum or optimal for manufacturing concerns when you say current assets by current liabilities when you talk about current ratio the current assets should be at least twice the current liabilities to address these current liabilities and to have a proper liquidity position and not to have too much of unnecessary blockage in working capital similarly you can also talk about uh, the asset test ratio that is quick assets by current liabilities what are quick assets we said we will remove stock and prepaid expenses from the list of current assets to call them as quick assets therefore these quick assets the assets which can be quickly realized the assets which can be quickly realized that is within a span of 3 to 4 months should be at least as much as equal to the current liabilities therefore with the help of these two ratios we can say these can be considered as optimal ratios but friends please trust me having exactly 2 is to 1 does not indicate it is the optimum there may be companies or there may be industries wherein even 2 is to 1 is not required for example if you take a restaurant business there is a requirement of working capital today you purchase the raw material by end of the day you generate sales see it happens so rapidly there is no time lapse at all therefore it all depends upon the nature of the business as to what has to be the optimum current ratio or asset test ratio